Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous. Nigerian government has, in a latest development, reiterated that university lecturers who have been on strike under the banner of the Academic Staff Union of Universities ASO won't be paid for the month they have been away from their areas of duty due to the ongoing and larger strike action rocking public universities in Africa's most populous nation. The Minister for Education, Malam Adamo Adamu, Adamu uh, made the clarion call Wednesday after the Federal Executive Council effect meeting, which was presided over by President uh, Muhammadu Buhari at the presidential villa in Abuja, while in the same time denying allegations that the government wants to reduce the lecturers to casual workers. In the meantime, the government's decision was met with mixed feelings from the as members as uh, the concerned lecturers protested the move. This move, however, has again presented an obscure future and may ostensibly frustrate efforts to put an end to the strike that has shaken uh, the education sector in uh, Nigeria uh, over the months. Uh, and we are asking this question, uh, uh, what there can be, uh, uh, what has to be done to reduce the uh, grave uh, consequences or implications of the government's action, the government's policy, of no job, no work stands, uh, not only on the striking lecturers, but also we are looking at the action on the uh, or the implication on the students and the government or the uh, Federal Republic of Nigeria as a whole. <laughs> Le monde, c'est nous. No job, no pay, reiterates the government of uh, uh, Nigeria, referring to striking uh, lecturers uh, of uh, the uh, ASO. We are reminded of that uh, over the months, uh, Nigeria, uh, Africa's uh, most populous nation, has been rocked by a series of strikes orchestrated by the uh, uh, ASO, that is uh, uh, the Academic Staff Union of uh, Universities uh, uh, across uh, Nigeria. Uh, laying down some demands uh, before the federal government uh, and uh, recently we saw the the minister for education coming uh, and giving a clarion call Wednesday uh, saying uh, without job there won't be a pay a decision that uh, uh, the government has actually underlined uh, and said they are going to maintain the stance but today on the program, we are looking at the implications of this uh, stance by the government of President uh, Muhammadu Buhari uh, regarding the strike action, the implications on the striking lecturers, the implication on students, and the implication on Nigeria's economy as a whole. You are most welcome to the program. This is uh, Views on the uh, Continental Platform, where we get uh, to analyze uh, pertinent issues affecting the African continent and the global world. And today, our focus in the East on Nigeria, still accentuating on the uh, ASO strike, uh, looking at the, the consequences, uh, the stakes of the strike, and how it is affecting the uh, education sector in Nigeria. What can the government do uh, to uh, uh, put an end or to solve the problems uh, uh, that have made the lecturers to boycott lectures over the months and of course the students facing uh, the grave, uh, uh, grave consequences of this uh, you are most welcome and uh, this is uh, views on the uh, continent uh, before we introduce the panel i will invite you all to listen to this report detailing how the um, Minister for Education came out at Radley saying that uh, uh, there will be no payments for uh, lecturers or university instructors who do not uh, resume work. And I will join you right after that. The federal government is sticking to its corn 
and insisting on the no work, no pay policy it has adopted against members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities. Government says there will be no salary for the university lecturers in the period which they did not work. The federal government's position comes despite the protest by members of ASU to express their dissatisfaction with the invocation of the no work, no pay policy of the federal government. Has been called off. The Minister of Education, Adamu Adamu, re-emphasized the government's position on Wednesday after the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting in Abuja when he fielded questions from State House correspondents. I mean, the strike has been called off and the, the government has paid them what is due to them. Well, I think that's the position of the government, that it is not going to pay anyone for work not done. And they only did, I think, the number of days that they were paid. The minister also denied claims that the federal government was planning to casualize university workers. But if you know the meaning of a casual worker, it is impossible to make a university lecturer a casual worker. The Federal Executive Council also approved more than 5 billion naira for printing of sensitive and non-sensitive materials for the National Examination Council, NECO, and another 3.2 billion naira was approved for the perimeter fencing of the Uthman Damfodio University in Sokoto. Council approved more than 2 billion naira for the procurement of operational vehicles for the Federal Road Safety Corps. The special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adeshino, disclosed that the contract for the purchase of the vehicles was given to local auto manufacturers. And that uh, report uh, was detailing the latest uh, development uh, regarding uh, the uh, ASO strike in Nigeria and uh, the move by the government uh, to curtail this uh, strike action, which uh, we said already has shaken uh, Nigeria in recent months. We are going to Nigeria this day to welcome the panel, and it's with uh, pleasure that I introduce to you uh, Ambassador Ikimeni Iyang. She is a social activist and uh, humanitarian uh, and welcome you to the pan-african television and of course uh, to the program views on the continent good afternoon thank you very much for having me You are most welcome. A pleasure having you this day. And of course, we are also joined uh, by Mr. Izenwa Nwagu. He is the Executive uh, Director of Pairing Advocacy and uh, Advancement Center in uh, Africa. Hello to you, sir, and thanks for joining us this day. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to have you all on the Pan-African television to discuss uh, what is making headline news across Africa. How can we bring a solution to the problem faced by the continent Africa? And today we are looking at how uh, the government of Nigeria can uh, peacefully solve the problem of lecturers or instructors there in the country and of course uh, uh, bring resolve to the, uh, uh, the difficulties faced by uh, the lecturers and which are also affecting the uh, education sector. I will start with you, Mr. Nwago. Uh, what's your appraisal of uh, the government's stance or the government's policy of no pay, no job uh, relating to the strike action uh, orchestrated by the uh, ASU? Well, I, I think it's important to first uh, background the conversation. Uh, background it in a way that can help uh, our viewers understand first that um, what has been in question really, uh, really for, for me has been a question of honor. Uh, you have governments enter into agreements and dishonor those agreements. Um, this current strike that you are talking about now is a is a renegotiated strike. It's not it's not a new strike. It's actually uh, a product of uh, a 2009 agreement that was entered with the Academic Staff Union of Universities, and that 2009 agreement was itself a renegotiation of the 1992 agreement when Professor 
Jega, former INEC chairman, was the president of ASU. So it's all been, you enter into agreements, you don't fulfill your own part of that agreement. So we need to first deal with the irresponsibility of not keeping to agreement that you freely entered into. So if you understand that, therefore, the current attitude of the government will not be surprising. It is in tandem with their attitude of impunity, their attitude of lack of respect for collective bargaining and the principles of trade union and trade uh, dispute resolution, which is very clear. So to continue this, uh, you, have, you, you know, work, no pay, is not part of the agreement. What was the agreement that the, the unions got into before they called on the strike? Is there a variation of that agreement? Was that what the industrial court um, adjudicated upon? So this, these are the questions that we, we need to answer. So it's not just a question of what, what do we think about. I think it is that continued you know, impunity and irresponsibility on the part of the government to dishonor its own agreements and then claim uh, victimhood because of the sensitive nature of the issue. It's about you know, uh, people going to school. So once you touch that part, parents uh, and other people feel very touched ar around the issue. But for me, it's still just a matter of principle, integrity, and honor. Uh, the terms uh, uh, coming to you uh, 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 uh what's your appraisal we know that uh, uh, the, the government before the teachers or the lecturers uh, called off the strike there the were some uh, points uh, agreed upon by the two parties and today we see the government coming reiterating a stance a stance that has actually angered again uh, the striking lecturers so what do you think uh, are the implications of, of this uh, a uh, recent stance by the uh, the government of Nigeria regarding the strike by the uh, ASU. Okay, um, you know the, the implications are actually very visible because uh, I think the government, the federal government, are trying to really weaken the university uh, lecturers, and uh, this is actually affecting the student directly. Because uh, if you look at it very well, if there was an agreement and you fail to honor, I think we should start from that. So when we fail to start from the actual agreement and we go on to punish people unnecessarily, I think uh, the federal government or should say the minister should really look into this matter. Because uh, you look at it. A lecturer, when you deny them uh, a pay and you said uh, they can't have entitlement or what they work for, irrespective of the fact that whatever negligence that happened there is not being caused by the lecturers. This is uh, something that we we are all conversant about. We know this. We we see this. We experience it. So uh, the federal government should not make it look like it. it is the fault of the lecturers. Then also, if you look at all this war, it is the, the student that suffers the most. Now, if you want to look, you know, see this thing very well, the lecturers and the, uh, let's say, ASU and the federal government, I'm very sure their children are not even schooling in Nigeria. And now uh, they are into this battle and it's affecting the student, a common, you know, Nigeria. And but if you look at uh, the implications of this, it's really going to affect the passion of any lecturer. The lecturer that will want to come to the class, you know, to lecture will not have the or do not have the would not be happy to even start with. And you see that some of them earn very little. And you look at it, the little that they have, and you have denied them access to that. You've not given them, you've not paid them for, for months. And you said no work, no pay. Where do you want them to even get money?
company to this, for instance? Where will they get the energy to even come to Nectar? Now, the federal government doing this thing, they are not going to raise to check what is happening. Whether enforcing, you know, forcing the, 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 the lecturers to go back to classes, do they follow them to go and see if actually they will go to work? what they've been able to do, what they've been able, if they've been able to impact as usual. Now you look at it that there will be no more effort. Lecturers will not want to dedicate more time to, to lecture. They will just say that after all, they're not paying them. Now let's leave all that. If they say no work, no pay. That's for the period of, you know, uh, the strike, that they don't want to pay them their rent. You look at it very well that it doesn't mean that they are not going to do the academic. But they are they are not going to be paid. How will they now have a new situation? Because I see how younger ones going to school right now and Is it not lecturers? Is it not the the 2021-2022 academic session? Is it not where they are talking about that they are not going to pay them? So this thing is unnecessary, you ask me, in my own opinion. I I, I want the federal government to really look into this matter. You also look at it that if they don't, if they say no work no pay, you see that a lot of lecturers will leave the classroom to go and do other businesses that can serve them money. So you see, nobody will want to come and stress. And I, I made my findings and I got to know that a lot of lecturers are actually earning very little. I was surprised to know that a lecturer in the university earns 70,000 naira. With the current situation in the, in the country, how do you even expect that person to survive? So I feel that instead of making it look like as if you have a maid at home and you're feeding the maid, so you instruct the maid to stand up and do this, and probably the, the maid didn't do it in your satisfaction and choose to punish your maid, you shouldn't see them like that. It should be, you know, considerate. I still I see, feel that, you know, what has to be demand is not out of place. It is it is not a new agreement, if, if I'm, I'm very correct. It is something they both agreed on years back. Just like we said in twenty uh, in two thousand and nine and also in two thousand and thirteen. So for now, that's that's what I have to say about that. Now, viewers of uh, this is views on the continent we are analyzing uh, the government of nigeria stance uh, uh, regarding the no uh, no job no pay uh, policy and the uh, implications uh, on uh, the uh, striking lecturers and of course uh, the, the students uh, uh, coming back to you mr Nwago, we continue to look at and you pointed out uh, that uh, the uh, government has largely failed in uh, her uh, uh, commitment Commitment uh, made with uh, the uh, uh, the uh, striking uh, lecturers, but then let's let's try to analyze some some pundits feel like the government does not have the money available to settle the grievances or the the salaries of of these lecturers, and they have actually accentuated on the fact that lecturers were out of their area of function. Does that alone uh, uh, suffice? Why uh, the demands, especially uh, the 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 remuneration of uh, the striking lecturers does the the the, 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 the this uh, suffice the the suspension of uh, their salaries i think we we need to restate the fact that the action of the government is condemnable it is condemnable to the point that if you understand what, who academics are you would then appreciate the fact that their work is not just to lecture. Their work is essentially 
um, to research. There is also the, the community work aspect of their work. So how did the government quantify uh, the pro rata basis on which they are paying right now? And how does the government also quantify the extra hours that the lecturers are putting to, to make up for the periods that they were not in class? That as we speak now, as the universities reopened, a lot of lecturers are working almost 18 hours to ensure that they cover the lost grounds. I think the, the point to be made is that there is a conscious effort by not just Nigerian government, by the IMF and the World Bank that continues to talk about the withdrawal of government from public you know, uh, education. You have a situation in which, as we speak now, consequences. the consequences is that there are more private universities or educational supermarkets that are emerging right now and against the destruction and the liquidation of the public universities. And the public universities are where the children of the poor are not so poor and middle class people can send their children. Most of these private universities are out of reach of the ordinary Nigerian. So we must first and foremost understand the philosophy that drives you know, this whole government attitude. You are the one that Asu wrote 10 letters, 10 or more than 10 letters, reminding you that there is a need to renegotiate the agreements that you entered into with them. You failed to respond to those letters. The process of getting strikes by the academics is a very tedious one. If you understand how strikes are achieved in ASU, you would then know that the government itself played completely, you know, if, if you permit the use of that word, didn't want to take any action on an agreement. So the question of not having the money is not, is not the issue. The government has the resources because these agreements always understand that it is ASU sitting on one side of the table, the government and the people they appointed to negotiate on their behalf sitting on one part of the table, and at the end of the day, an agreement is reached. If you do not have the means to fulfill that agreement, the honorable thing to do is to get back. You don't wait for ASU to call you. You get back to ASU and say, because of X, Y, Z, we are not able to meet the agreement we reach with you. But that will not happen until there is a strike action, until there is a plea, until for people who are rendering patriotic service to their country. So I think that the industrial court and self-respecting people of Nigeria will need to persuade the government not to allow a new crisis in the educational, tertiary educational sector of Nigeria. Because what is happening is that if this issue is not resolved, we're likely going to go into another cycle of you know, circle of uh, uh, industrial action, which will not go well for public education. And that is the point that we are interested in, that if you destroy public education, if you continue to allow the festering of these educational supermarkets called private universities, the children of the poor and not so poor will not have education. Right now, all around Africa, we are glamorizing entrepreneurship. We are making it look like people don't need to go to school that if they can't go to university, they should drop out and go and become shoe makers. They should become this and that. And they talk about Silicon Valley and all of those issues. But the, the, the value of education is not just about, you know, earning a living. It is about the actualization of the self in a way that people can make critical decisions that affect their life. And that is what the ruling class of Nigeria does not want at this time. They want to impoverish the people Popularize them and ensure that they are not even able to make that conscious decision or by, by themselves. And that is the target. That is the eventual target of the kind of educational policy that Adamu Adamu and his comrades are, are, are pursuing. So we need to situate it properly because if you talk about no pay, all of those are 
extension of the onslaught against public education. At the end of the day, most of these lecturers will leave the, the public universities and migrate to the private universities or even go out of the country. And at the end of the day, we will continue to then have a situation in which public universities will not rank even 1,000 among the, the ratings, not just even in Africa, talk of uh, outside, outside Africa. Why we reiterated in our preamble, uh, looking at the implications of, of the uh, decision by the government of Nigeria, not only uh, on the striking lecturers, but then the economy of Nigeria, as you rightly uh, uh, outlined or, or underlined, uh, Mr. Mwaku, uh, what implications? Uh, how will this cost the uh, public uh, sector or public universities in Nigeria and the effect on uh, children? We continue in the same light uh, with uh, uh, Ambassador Inya. Uh, Mr. Mwago just underlined very pertinent issues. Uh, given that the decision by the government will automatically affect the input of uh, these uh, uh, university instructors. So uh, what's your opinion about this? Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the teachers apparently uh, do not have this external motivation that is coming from uh, the government. So how can we reverse this to ensure that uh, this strike action should not move from the state where it is to an uncontrollable uh, situation? Okay, uh, in my own opinion, I think uh, if this should look into or bringing in a policy, public office orders from traveling outside the country to study, ban their children from going outside the country to study, even their words. You know, I think that will let them know that they need to value education. And uh, if you look at it, you know, in, in history made us to know that uh, other countries used to come to Nigeria to study. But today, the story is different. You know, we don't see, we, we actually see how a young, you know, person in Nigeria, a student, will be so excited, will be looking for a way to even leave the country to go and study, where he or she will be able to graduate on time, not being delayed by unnecessary strike or whatever the fight may be. You also have to see how we can raise the, the budgetary allegation to education. Uh, it is surprising that uh, in Nigeria, we, we don't even value education. How can the state percent of you know, allocated you know, for education? Isn't that society? Like, who does that? You know, they've made us to, to know that education is nothing. And uh, this makes us to question about their education background. Because I believe that somebody that is educated should be able to invest more in education to better the country. Not because when they don't do this thing, you see, it affects the country even. You we'll see, we hear a whole lot of things, robbery, banditry, all the... Everybody has to carry arms now. A young man of trying to be productive. Um, we we have difficulties uh, getting you uh, uh, clearly uh, 
Miss um, Madam Iya. Uh, we are going to continue with you, Mr. Ngwago, uh, outlining uh, the uh, shortfalls of the, the government of uh, uh, Muhammadu uh, Buhari. I always say that uh, Nigeria is uh, uh, facing a plethora of uh, problems, which uh, the ASU strike is, is one that has actually shaken the country. So, And we know that the country is uh, gradually moving towards uh, presidential elections. So uh, now, this is a central point, especially for politicians who are presently crisscrossing uh, uh, countries or states uh, across the country to who uh, are eligible voters. So how can the, the incoming government uh, try to solve uh, this uh, teacher's uh, uh, problem? You underlined, uh, of course, the place of instructors, the place of teachers cannot be compromised in today's society, especially in the context where we want to drive Africa uh, to the top. Of course, you mentioned entrepreneurship and some uh, pundits have always advocated for uh, uh, the educational system to be redefined in Africa. But then today we see a country like Nigeria, uh, which used to be uh, exemplary when it comes to studies. And of course, facing this highest track, what can you say about uh, uh, the uh, maybe the, the incoming government? What can they prepare in order to, to solve this problem uh, once they uh, take over the button of command in uh, Nigeria. In badly, I, I think we need to uh, contextualize our conversation. The struggle for improved funding of public education, the struggle for better pay for the lecturers, and the struggle for better living condition for the students is a continuous one, is one that uh, patriotic Nigerians are involved in and academic staff union of universities are in the in the forefront of that struggle. Now the big challenge is that the the politicians, uh, the, the, the ones that have offered themselves right now, my sense is that they all read from the same textbook, they worship in the same shrine, they drink from the same pond. President Obasanjo ran the country for eight years. In that eight years, there were more than 16 strikes by the academic staff in all of universities. The person who took over from him had about six strikes. Jonathan had close to nine strike actions. So in terms of lessons, you, we don't have any evidence to show that the, the the ruling class, not just the Nigerian ruling class, the African ruling class has not come to the point where they understand what it means to invest in public education. And so in the period of the uh, campaigns that our country is getting into, we will continue to impress it on those who want to govern the country that they must increase funding for public education. They must increase funding for public education. There is a report, a 2014 report, that was put together by the federal government on the condition of tertiary education. They can revisit any presidential candidate should look for that report. The chair of that panel was the is the current uh, INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakub. He was the chair of the special government panel that went around the country to look at the conditions of tertiary education. Everything you want as to how to revitalize public education is already documented, is available for these presidential candidates to look at. But as you know, the challenge with campaigns is that all the manifestos, not just in Nigeria, are written in gloss. They are written in good language. There is nobody that will be campaigning that will say, I will not fund public education. There is nobody that will campaign that will say, I will not make the schools livable for students. It is the responsibility of patriotic organizations to continue to put their leg on the fire. And that is what academic staff of universities have continued to do. They are perhaps the only remaining patriotic organization in the country that have decided not to emigrate like others are doing. Medical doctors are leaving the country, uh, nurses are leaving, 
all kinds of people are leaving. These lecturers have insisted that they struggle to make our educational sector improve it and make it better is important. There is also the chapter two of our constitution. The chapter two of our constitution is very clear that government has a responsibility to, to fund public education from primary to university free of charge. And when the only challenge is that they made that chapter two not to be justiciable. So in the coming period, the struggle to make justiciable chapter two will be very important in making it compulsory for government to fund public education from primary to tertiary education. And the money to do that is there. The resources to do that is there. The kind of money that is being stolen, the kind of money that is in private hands in Nigeria, if we plug those holes, we'll be able to use them and divert them for public good, and which is the funding of public education. So the reality is that the investment in the campaigns will be a citizen one. Citizens must invest in making sure that the presidential candidates have all the documents that have been produced from 1992. ASU was asking for six billion, six billion in 1992, education stabilization fund. The government at that time said they don't have the money, but we have seen the amount of money that has been stolen, that has been taken away from our shores to foreign lands. If those monies are kept in the country, we will be able to fund free education from primary to university. So the campaign period is not for the politicians to be the one telling us what they are going to do. Because in reality, our history tells us that they will continue to make those promises, but except the citizens themselves invest time in holding them accountable and become as patriotic as ASU. Because you keep asking the question, uh, the implication for the students. The struggle of ASU is to make life better for the students. Come to Nigeria, most of the universities room that is meant for one person, about 12 persons are living in those rooms. Their toilets are not good enough for any 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 healthy person to, to go to, to go to. The libraries are, are not what you can call libraries. Lecturers have had to be doing handouts to survive. So these challenges are the struggle of the students. Unfortunately, the organization of students that should champion the resources have gone into what, what I can't explain. So us is to continue to encourage us to, to encourage other patriotic Nigerians struggling for improved public education to not to let the guard off, whether it is this government or any other government, as far as the IMF and the World Bank continue to insist of withdrawal of government from funding public good. They tell them don't fund uh, agriculture. Don't fund the education. Don't fund, just take your hands off. In their own countries, because you talk about uh, uh, Africa and entrepreneurship, the children of the rich, are they learning shoemaking? In Cameroon, the children of the rich of Cameroon, are they learning tailoring? They are in the best schools in France. They are in the best schools in Canada and the United States of America. They are telling the children of the poor not to go to school, to become entrepreneurs, so that their own children will return back and occupy offices that all that you need to occupy those offices is education. Nobody can be Central Bank of Cameroon if that person is not educated, if that person does not go. You, the entrepreneur can never be Central Bank governor. An entrepreneur can never be Minister of Health. An entrepreneur cannot be Chief Justice of the Federation. So when their own children go to these Ivy League universities to go and read, they are telling the children of the poor to go and do tailoring and, and, and shoe making. That is a deception that is running around the, the political elite of Africa. And it needs to be challenged in, in, its, in its... So we need to fund public education, not just tertiary education, from primary to secondary school. We need to invest money there so that the children of the poor can also have the same opportunity the children of the rich are having even in those other countries.
plays a, a vital role even in the transformation of uh, the uh, total uh, uh, African uh, continent. Uh, thank you for that, uh, uh, Mr. Nwago. Uh, just to remind our viewers joining us that this is Views on the Continent uh, in, on pan, uh, the Pan-African Television Afric Media. We continue to discuss uh, issues affecting the continent Africa. We continue to invite you. Uh, this is a platform where you get to share your opinion regarding uh, uh, problems faced by Africa. And today we are looking at uh, the educational sector as a whole and particularly in Nigeria, the ASO strike and the move uh, by the government, the way the government is handling this, does it mean, uh, is, is it a wise decision uh, from the federal government or uh, is it time for them to reverse their stance? Coming back to you, uh, Mrs. Ian. Okay, yes, uh, I would say they should reverse their yes, stance. Yes, I would say that, yeah, because of what they are, they, they, as the union are asking for is not out of play. It is their right. So I'm speaking from the, the, the perspective of students. And I'm trying to also use this video to remind them that this fight or necessary model of doing this claim is not directly affecting them. And I, I, I can as well say it's not also directly affecting the ASU members because some of them to their children are outside Nigeria. This whole fight is actually affecting a common student in Nigeria. Those from homes who do not have the funds to, to be to, to be studied outside Nigeria. So they should reconsider. And we are, uh, uh, we are pleading they should come down from their high course to do that. And uh, if they don't do it, there's no way they can deprive us from our rights, you know, and they expect a peaceful nation. Because already we have a lot of you know, students that were supposed to be in school, but they are, you know, growing on the streets. And we see that a lot of them, who were good students, who were good children, have started um, joining bad guys. It's really affecting. So when we talk about insecurity, we should also try to go in depth to see, you know, what will trigger that, the high level of insecurity in the, in the country. So I'm also standing on behalf of the students to say uh, the federal government and ASU should come together and really have a lasting solution to stop unnecessary uh, uh, strike. And you see, a young person who you know who had the mind to 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 be in school for like four years will end up staying in school for seven years. Let's like, so uh, someone is studying a professional uh, course that's supposed to be like six years, who end up staying in school for ten years. It is, it is, it, it's not sweet anymore. So, like I said before, the 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 network interrupted. I said, if they should, you know, make the the people in public offices to see to also feel what a common Nigerian are feeling, I think they will have reason not to be having, you know, uh, all this uh, war. We should come back home. Let's fix Nigeria together. And how are we going to do that? Invest in education. Allow the lecturers to teach in an, as an, a very conducive environment. Let them also feel like they are feeling like um, the leaders. You see them, they are well to do, they have enough fun, they have access to, they do whatever they like, they fly out when they go. But you see, a lecturer will not have such liberty. Then you also look at it because uh, I interact with young people a lot. And I get to know what in those days, you know, when they are asking us, what do you want to become in the future? You hear children shouting, I want to be a teacher, I want to be this, I want to be a lecturer, I want to be a doctor, I want to be... But today, you can't find a child that so wish to become a teacher. 
Why? Because they've cheated me. Personally, I want to be a cheater because I'm not, I'm not seeing anything they did to. So I will use any platform, any media to beg the federal government to reconsider, to see the fact that we, the younger ones, they are the ones suffering for this fight. They are just muzzling and, you know, trying to check or get to know the superiority, who's supposed to obey the laws, who's not supposed to obey. When the two elephants are fighting, the grass suffers. So the students are suffering. So please, they should not cut short our future. They should give us a room. They should give us, they should look at the infrastructure in school. They should make education beautiful. I want my children to school in Nigeria. I want them to be proud to know their roots. We have a lot of promising young you know, people in Nigeria. They are all outside different countries. So I think the federal government to reverse the no pay, no work policy. government of Nigeria to reconsider or to reverse uh, this uh, policy which is actually uh, uh, causing anger among uh, uh, the uh, lecturers who have dedicated their time, their intellect to serving the country like uh, Mr. Mwago uh, highlighted. Uh, uh, other uh, 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 talented or experts have been uh, uh, leaving the country but then uh, uh, teachers or lecturers have decided to serve the motherland. Uh, coming back to you, Mr. Mwago, let's look at this aspect of uh, youth manipulation across Africa. Uh, in recent times, we are talking about radicalization, which is on the rise. And we see that the young people, the more the young people become very vulnerable, the more they are exposed to, to uh, in, uh, indulging in uh, illegal activities. So let's see how uh, the uh, third party can use now the, the ASSO strike uh, in Nigeria to bring uh, these students uh, uh, who are already very susceptible to, 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 to bring them on the path we see uh, radicalization. This is what we want us to analyze this youth manipulation in uh, the uh, contemporary uh, Africa that is increasing as far as uh, uh, as the geopolitical game too is increasing across Africa, we see that youths become more and more vulnerable. How can uh, the government avert this uh, uh, ongoing uh, uh, dispute between the, the federal government and the ASSO strike to ensure that the effects are not too severe on uh, the uh, young people or young Nigerians? The government exists to provide for the wealth, welfare interest of their citizens. Uh, when government abdicates that responsibility, then it's, uh, it has, it's subverting itself in, in reality. So uh, I, I think that the, what I continue to hear is that I don't, I, I've, I've actually said that we should not be calling this ASU strike because when you say ASU strike, you demonize ASU. You demonize ASU and make ASU looks like, because when people say unnecessary strike action and all of that, ASU and government should come together. ASU and government comes together to make an agreement. ASU will not just go on strike. I, I need to underscore this point over and over again. No trade union, what is sought, will just embark on strike. It, any trade union that is what is sold goes through certain processes to achieve a strike. It is the intransigence of the employer, the government, that brings about a strike. So the attention should be on the government that is continued to be provocative. The no work, no pay rule is a provocative action. It is an action that is demanding that the lecturers should down to the game. And the students who we are claiming that they are the, uh, the, 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 the consequences of the strike action is on them, should then understand that if this strike action comes, if it impacts them, they should take the responsibility of holding their government accountable. In terms of the youth manipulation and radicalization, what is the quality of literature that is available today to
the uh, uh, interruption now uh, we continue to uh, to look at how the government of Nigeria it is not too late for people to actually uh, go to the streets it means uh, the uh, have uh, points to present and of course uh, there has always been a call for those uh, at the helm to treat with caution uh, the uh, problems especially of uh, instructors uh, across uh, the uh, uh, the country we know that some countries in Africa are largely uh, uh, instable right now because uh, of the failure or the inadequate uh, uh, measures uh, presented towards solving problems uh, presented by especially uh, uh, teachers uh, uh, across the the country how can we give this uh, lecturers uh, the place least they deserve in the society. It is often said that the teachers oh, uh, that are the ones who educate even the presidents of every country, every nation, but then uh, why, uh, what explains uh, uh, the, 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 the situation or uh, the uh, vulnerable situation, which is very peculiar in almost all the countries uh, around the continent. Uh, what can be done right now to solve uh, the uh, the problem in uh, Nigeria? Uh, if you're back, uh, Mr. Nwago, we will continue to analyze uh, uh, how this is going to affect the, the young people, the vulnerable ones in Nigeria. Uh, uh, unfortunately, um, uh, Mrs. Uh, Eya, if you are with me, we continue to look at uh, the impact of this uh, and how can, uh, what advice can you give to the students concerned uh, as far as uh, this, uh, uh, the, the, the strike uh, action is concerned? What advice can you give to them to remain optimistic amidst uh, the uncertainty uh, that is surrounding the education sector there in the public universities across Nigeria? Unfortunately, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, two panelists uh, have been interrupted. We apologize uh, for the uh, uh, interruption. Things are uh, beyond uh, control. And of course, uh, we uh, have been informed that uh, we are already running against time uh, and we'll have to uh, draw the curtains to, uh, uh, to today's uh, program, uh, telling you that we will actually come back to analyze uh, this uh, uh, topic uh, uh, in total to see the way forward towards solving uh, the uh, problems of university instructors not only in Nigeria but across the African uh, continent. I wish to thank all of you for being part of this program and uh, to encourage you to keep trusting the uh, Pan-African television Afric Media for news is always on the move. I wish you uh, all a lovely and a blissful weekend in the company of our transmissions why I say bye to you. Afrique Media. Le monde, c'est nous.